Hello everyone. So, we will continue with the sampling of textile material. So, last class we have discussed the broad classification of sampling. It is broadly classified into two uh, categories one is numerical sampling and then uh, another is uh, biased sampling. Biased sampling is mainly it is a length biased we will discuss and causes of biasness to have discussed it is a due to physical characteristics of material, position of uh, relative to the person, subconscious biasness and conscious biasness this we have discussed. Now, we will start with the terms various terms related to sampling. So, commonly used in the industry okay. terms first term is consignment one must understand this difference between these terms. A consignment is that it is a it is a delivered uh, item at a time okay. and it may consist of several lots like and it is a delivered from a particular supplier to a particular buyer it is called consignment. Suppose one supplier is supplying 10 tons of yarn of 20s count, 5 tons of 30s count, say another 10 tons for say 50s count like that. This is order from a particular supplier and he is supplying this order to that part the uh, customer at a time. So, this total three different lots he is supplying one is of say 20 count another 30 count and 50 count lots he is supplying at a time. Once it is going at a time maybe say 10 containers once it is going at a time then it is called one consignment. Similarly, for fabrics also for different types of design if it is going from one supplier to a particular customer at a time that will be one consignment. And say yarn 20 count, 30 count and 50 count they are going together as a consignment, but this 20 count and total 20 count it is called lot okay. and this test lot it is statistically it is a population. That means, one particular lot when it is coming at a time same time or batch it is totally statistically it is population. That means, the test lot or batch it consists of all the containers say 20 count it has got say 6 containers. So, this 6 contain all the containers of definite type and quality same quality delivered to one customer at the same time that is called the lot. If the same material is going in other day with other consignment that will be considered at other lot that is a lot and one lot is taken as whole population as per statistics. So, the population does not mean the entire material which that customer has received throughout the month it is not that in a particular day in a particular consignment whatever material is coming in a lot that particular lot is known as the statistical population. Okay. Then what is laboratory sample? So, we have seen the consignment we have understood the law uh, lot then laboratory sample is that using the statistical sampling technique from the lot population if we take the sample that is called the laboratory sample. 
we are used it is derived by the appropriate sampling method from the test lot. Test lot means the whole material it is a part of the consignment and will be used as the basis of the testing in the lab. This sample sampling we are doing only for testing for in the laboratory that is why it is called laboratory sample. And from the laboratory sample say we have got say such 50 bobbins and or say 500 gram or 100 gram of yarn fiber loose fiber and from this loose fiber we need say this much material for say fiber fineness measurement. Actually it is used for fiber fineness measurement or this much material fiber is used for say length measurement. So, this is the actually the fiber is used this is called the specimen it is called the test specimen, which is derived from the laboratory sample and is actually used for the measurement of the parameter. So, consignment then test lot then laboratory sample and the test specimen. So, for testing one must know these terms okay, to avoid any confusion and sampling the significance in the textile material. Why sampling is important in textile material as we have mentioned the only reason is that the uh, sampling of textile material fiber, sliver, roving, yarn, fabric should be representative of the bulk okay. and sampling technique assume utmost importance because the textile material is highly variable in nature. So, for other material other product where specific shape is produced their sampling is not that important. We one can use randomly some material and test, but in textile material as it is a highly variable. So, we must uh, follow specific sampling technique. Now, coming to the sampling of textile material, okay. first starting with the cotton fiber from bell. So, cotton comes in the bell form and sampling of cotton has to be carried out at three distinct stages. If we talk about the sampling from bell, first is that sampling from bell, it is a called bulk sample, first we have to take bulk sample. Then from bulk sample we have to collect the basic sample and from basic sample we have to collect the laboratory sample. This is these are the three stages of sampling of cotton fiber from bell. Now, bulk sample what is that? When a large number of bales of cotton belonging, belonging to a particular variety, suppose we have got say 100 bales, okay, particular this part is a few bales may be chosen at random. So, this selection has to be by based on the random number. So, few bales we are selecting as a by random numbering okay, as representing the bale. Okay. So, the bulk this few numbers say 10 bales we are selecting these are actually representing the bulk and the numbers of sample there are some standards if our bulk size is say 50 we can take two bells we do not have to waste the material two bells at random. So, 51 to 100 then four bells like that. So, 1000 and above so 40 bells we have to select random this is the standard sample size okay. and then bulk sample what we have to do we have to draw handful of fiber 
from different portion of the bell. So, we just open the strap, take samples bulk samples from top, from center, from bottom different randomly which will be representative sample. Okay. After that, so that bulk from the say suppose we have in the consignment we have 100 bells. So, we have selected 4 such bells and we have taken the bulk sample randomly from 4 bells and then basic sample we have to the tufts of fibers from each bell may be mixed up thoroughly as to form homogeneous representative of sample. So, from each bell what a from different tufts from particular bells we have taken sample from top, bottom, center and then we mix. We mix the sample to may have homogeneous mixture and from there we take select sample. From each bell we select and proper homogeneous sample from all the bells chosen at random. Okay. That is the basic sample we have prepared and total quantity of basic sample prepared should be around 1.5 kg, 1 kg. So, that we have total quantity from different bell. So, if you have say uh, number of sample, number of bells is 40, so then accordingly we have to take smaller one. If we have say 2 bells, we have to take say 500 gram plus 500 gram like that. Total basic sample quantity is roughly around 1 kg. So, basic sample is there. So, this they are separate, separately mixed and depending on the number of bells it is basic sample is prepared. Then after that to have laboratory sample to find a sample in which the test has to be carried out is called laboratory sample as we have already mentioned the laboratory sample is drawn from the basic sample. So, from those homogeneously mixed sample, so that basic sample has to be prepared and derived into several equal parts okay. and from each part. Now, here normally we use the zoning technique. So, laboratory sample is prepared, then we take from each part small tufts of fiber is drawn and then and all these tufts are mixed together to form a small sample. So, the technique is used here is typically it is called zoning technique and for all this uh, maturity, HVI, all these characteristics and example is zoning technique. We, we may use, I will come, I will discuss the zoning technique and so here using the zoning technique one can get the laboratory sample. Okay. Before going to the actual sampling of uh, fibers or yarns. Let us try to understand the concept of critical difference. The critical difference is measured, it is a measure of difference between the two values that arises solely due to nature, natural or unavoidable causes. It is due to natural cause, okay. that is called critical difference. When the difference between two values exceeds this critical difference, then we can tell it is a statistically different okay. and uh, these values are based on the recommended number of test for which for each fiber or yarn that is given in table. I will give show you the table. So, for the uh, for a different type of test, <coughs> different type of test result the critical difference values are given like C. These are the standard tables available like for 2.5 percent span length if we want to get the critical difference. So, number of tests required for such combs the sample for fibrograph is called comb, okay. fibro sampler produce the sample in the form of comb that I will discuss. 
So, per at least 4 combs per sample should be there and critical difference is that 4 percent. If the span length 2.5 percent value span length value is more than 4 percent, then the critical difference is its actual difference is existing, significant difference is there that we can tell. For uniformity ratio, again 4 combs per sample, it is a 5. Micron air value, 4 plugs per sample, it is a 6 like that. This is the, uh, the for trash content, 8 tests per sample, 7 percent. And micron air value, this is the value 6 percent, just to remember the 6 percent. I will discuss, I will give you one example in next slide, so that it will be clear. Okay? I have give, taken only one example for microgranule just to show the uh, significance of critical difference. For Lee count 40 test this one 22 percent CT, like U percent 10 test it is a 5, okay. double yarn uh, twist 50 test it is a 2 percent. These are the critical difference uh, tabulated critical difference and we have to calculate the difference based on the particular number of sample. Now, try to see the example here. A cotton is tested and it has got 3.4 and 3.6 values. Now, we have to see whether these two cottons they have got the, the difference is exactly statistically significant or not, whether this difference is other than the chance factor or not or natural variation or not. So, critical difference actually gives indication of the natural variation, because textile material they are naturally variable. Because this I will come back going I am going back to the slide again. So, this 4 percent it is uh, span length variation is due to the natural variation that has to be there. We cannot go beyond that okay. that is uh, that is how the it is based on the experience that this data there is no it is uh, based on the statistics. Okay. So, 3.4 is there and another test it is giving 3.6 value. Now, we have to take this in whether this, this, is, this difference is statistically significant or not. The percent difference is expressed as 3.6 minus 3.4 that is the difference divided by the mean and expressed in percentage. Mean is here 3.5, 3.4 and 3.6 mean is 3.5. So, difference is 5.6, but the tabulated value which we have seen earlier it was 6 percent. So, which is less than that. So, that means we can tell this difference is natural, it is not due to other reason, there is no statistical proof that the difference is difference exists. And also the number of test, I will go back once again, the say number of test is say 40 number of test here it is a 40, number of test here it is a uh, 100. Sometime it may not be possible due to various reason that many samples uh, test is not possible or sometime we may not stick to 40, we may go beyond that 50. In that case we can calc recalculate the critical difference using this formula. The recommended number of tests are not performed, it may be less or more the new critical difference can be computed. We can that is critical difference new is that this is the tabulated critical difference multiplied by n 1 by n 2 under root n 1 by n 2, where n 1 is the recommended number as per table, n 2 is the test actually number of test carried out. So, using this formula one can calculate the modified critical difference and uh, then compare the see the whether the test material significantly different or not. Okay. The accuracy of the test data 
depends upon the number of tests carried out that we will discuss uh, separately. If we take the number of sample more, more the sample the confidence level will be more and accuracy will be more. Now, we will start with the sampling of textile material. First, the sampling technique it is a from bulk we have to take the laboratory sample and uh, for cotton the sample which is the technique which is used it is called zoning technique. Now, zoning technique it is not in um, any specific technique it is a it is a idea it is there is no specific rule one can formulate the rule then one can go ahead this thing. And I will explain one such um, uh, norms, one such rule which is flexible. Okay. Say tapped of sample from at least 40 zones has to be there. Okay. So, 40 zones one has to create. So, take a specific proportion from each tapped to make the final sample looking one free from any damage. Okay. So, free from any damage you take the sample from the bulk a sample of sufficient quantity say about 100 gram we have to prepare is prepared by selecting about say 80 large tuft chosen as far as possible over the bulk. So, different tufts we are we have uh, selected divide the this sample into four quarters. So, four quarters it has been divided take 16 small tufts at random from each quarter the size approximately 20 milligram. So, from each quarter four quarter we have divided and then from each quarter we have taken 16 small tufts. So, how much tuft we have got? We have got say 64 tufts. Okay. Each small tuft shall be halved several times like this is small tuft. So, I am taking this one and discarding this. Then I am rotating again right angle and again I am discarding from this. In this way we have to several time we have to take the halves. Okay. Discard alternatively with right and left hand. So, we have to discard the sample and keep on reducing the quantity and after each tapped discussion discarding then we have to rotate it. So, that you are again randomizing okay. turning the tapped through a right angle between successive havi. 16 waves are thus produced from the from each quarter of the sample. So, this 16 with that is 4 set of 16 that is 64 combine each set 4 set of with into tops. So, we are getting 4 tops we are getting mix each tuft in turns by doubling and drawing. So, by doubling and drawing we have to mix the tuft between fingers. So, we have to again so tufts we have to mix like this doubling and drawing. Divide each tuft into four parts okay. obtain four new tufts by combining a part of each of former tabs as for example, part 1 of tab 1, part 1 of tab 2, part 1 of tab 3 and part 1 of tab 4 are mixed together. Similarly, part 2 of tab 1, part 2 of in this way we are mixing mix each new tab 4 new tab again by doubling and drawing. So, in this way 
zoning technique will uh, continue take a quarter from each tuft go to and then we are making the final sample. So, then quarter from each step by again discarding we will get final sample and that, that was a different sampling technique zoning technique one can have another simplified zoning technique. Okay. This animation will tell here we have taken from different bells tufts from different bells okay basic samples from different bells we have taken and after that we are dividing into two part discarding one part and they again, again it is dividing into two part discarding one part this is one part which is coming and then finally after several uh, time uh, repetition we are getting this final value final stuff and then we mix these things together and this is called zoning technique because we are using at diff from different zone we are trying to take and after every after discarding every sample we are rotating it again. Now, this animation will give idea. try to see these are the initial sample. Now, it is dividing into two halves red one we have to reject. So, we are we are discarding and rest half we are taking okay, this are discarding and this again we are dividing into two parts by rotating okay, 90 degree again it is a we are discarding in this way amount of fiber number of fibers are reducing quantity of material is reducing and ultimately the final quantity will be the addition of all this. So, this is the if we know our required number of fibers or required quantity of fibers, so we can continue up to that point. Suppose we have say x number of a, n number of uh, this zones, n different zones are there, and say say 20 zones are there, and we require say uh, 100 gram, 100 gram of fiber. Okay, so then each zone we we should continue up to the up to the point where each zone will have say 5 gram 5 gram of material. So, the two you mix all this we will get 100 gram. So, this is the zoning technique which is very simple one and zoning technique there is the advantage is that there is no specific rule of zoning technique. One can formulate zoning technique on his own for the industry. Okay. Next is that wool sampling from the bell and which is very important for wool fiber because the wool raw fiber it is highly sticky and to get fiber from the bell it is not so simple it is not easy because it is a highly compact. So, we have to take fiber from the we cannot open wool bell so easily. Okay. We have to take the lamp from the surface and then only we can open it is not it is very difficult to take sample from the center of the bell. So, the core sampling is used. So, it is used for assessing the proportion of grease vegetable matter in the sample taken from unopened bell of raw material. So, it is basically used for to measure the grease content and to some extent we can test the diameter, but we cannot test the length of the fiber because here it consists of a cutting tip 
this is a tube coring tube this and through this cutting tube it penetrates this and here this is a plastic bag just to store the material and the slit is there enable the core to be re ejected by core ejector okay core has to be ejected okay so this it consists of a, this tube and cutting tip now the coring tube length it's approximately 2 feet length so if we see the wool fiber wool fiber bell it's typically 4 uh, feet it's a uh, total height is 4 feet so it's 2 feet because if we if it penetrates it is reaching up to the center okay the halfway into the bell that is sample from the center we can take the tube penetrates in the direction of compression because the fibers it it doesn't penetrate vertically it it penetrates directly where the compression side is there so perpendicular to the layer of fibers it penetrates the cutting tip diameter is less than the coring diameter this cutting tip diameter is less than the core tube diameter the advantage is that it helps the sliding of core core means the cut wool fiber by the cutting tube when it penetrates when it is pushed the fibers are cut it forms a cylindrical core the core diameter is equal to the cutting tip diameter which easily penetrates inside the coring tube <coughs> that is why this diameter is smaller another advantage is that it helps retaining the core as it is withdrawn so because when the material when the wool uh, that uh, coring tube is uh, withdrawn the core should be inside the coring tube it should not come back so as it is smaller in size after penetrating the core gets expanded and so the coring tube when it is withdrawn the core is or remains in the coring tube the number of cores are extracted and combined so there will be a number of cores will be extracted and this they are stored here so each core will have certain quantity and after that the, the core is actually is transferred to the this plastic bag okay different size of tubes are there this type 14 millimeter 15 millimeter 18 depending on the type of wool after removal the cores are kept in airtight container immediately so this is the polythene bag so after that uh, core is taken and then it's a airtight container is there because otherwise the wool will absorb moisture and total characteristics will change so we don't need to open this uh, uh, polythene sheet polythene bag so that it, uh, it, uh, it should not get exposed to the environment and hydraulic coring machine is there for large number of sample coring machine that hy it's automatic hydraulic pressure is there so it penetrates automatically now let us see the animation here this is the coring tube and it's a bell of wool fiber and it's penetrating it's penetrating inside and this is one core has been withdrawn okay and this uh, tube is full of the core so that you have to remove this core so you uh, take uh, it's a vertically it's a then this core will be stored here okay and another core you can, we, then we keep on repeating 
until and unless the required quantity of material is collected. So, next core is there. So, this is the coring technique. Okay. Now, here one important thing is that, that this coring tube is cutting the fiber. The coring tube this uh, due to this the tip it is cutting the fiber. So, we have to select all we have to test th those parameters only which are not actually dependent on the cutting of the fiber. So, we will not definitely test the fiber length, we will definitely we will try here it is used for grease content which is very important which does not actually depend on the length whether it is cut or not does not depend. Okay. And to some extent this coring this sample is used for the fiber diameter, but from long fiber also one can measure the fiber diameter. Now, fiber sampling from sliver, roving or yard, it is very difficult to obtain unbiased sample because unless special precautions are taken, longer fibers are more likely to be taken by the sampling procedure leading to a length bias sampling. So, as I have already mentioned, so if we try to take the sample from the bulk also, if we try to pick the sample, we are actually selecting the length bias sample even for this uh, sliver if we try to pick we are trying to take the length by assembly because longer fiber will have chance more chance higher chance to be selected. So, there are two ways of uh, counteract this problem one is we have to we can prepare the numerical sample which is actually which is uh, different from length bias sample which is unbiased sample. Another way is then to prepare a length bias sample in such a way that the biasness can be allowed to do away with do any calculation based on some assumptions. So, there will be some assumption. So, first we take the length bias sample and then we can calculate based on the knowing the fact it is a length biased and then we can assume some assumptions. Okay. First we will discuss the length by numerical sampling. Now, in this numerical sampling the remove all the fibers which are started at left of the line A. This is the sliver suppose it is a sliver we are trying to uh, discuss the, the this is the sliver. So, in the sliver suppose it is a we have drawn so imaginary line A, B, C, D like that. Okay. First we decide we take all the fiber which are at the left side of the A line A. So, we, we have we have taken out 1, 2, 3, 4 fibers. Now, this removal of these fibers is not affecting the fibers which have end point at between A and B. So, removal of all fibers which are started left of A point the other fibers will be unaffected total unaffected. So, we if we remove all these fibers other fibers will be unaffected again removing the fibers from zone A B this zone that with the green pointed fibers if we remove all these fibers the other fibers will be unaffected like red pointed and uh, black pointed fibers will get unaffected. In this way if we keep on taking the fibers there the longer fibers whether fibers are longer or shorter they have got equal opportunity. So, the 
numerical sample is taken from the end point of any parallelly arranged fiber strand, but we cannot draw numerical sample from a fiber tuft randomly oriented fiber tuft we cannot draw a numerical sample. Here whenever wherever we try to take it will be the length bias sample, but in a parallelly oriented sample it may be roving may be sliver or may be yarn. If we take the fibers sample from the end end point we are taking the fibers irrespective of the length. Here the length of the fiber is not coming into picture. So, both short fiber and long fiber all the fibers irrespective of length will have equal opportunity to get selected. So, that is why it is a numerical sample. Okay. If the new removal of one sample does not affect the composition of the remaining samples, then it can be considered as numerical sample. That means, if we remove this sample all the sample fibers left of st which start end point at the left of B, this will not affect the composition of other fibers. So, that is why here it is a um, length unbiased sample. Okay. And what is length bias sample? In length bias sample, the samples of higher length will have the chance of getting selected, more probability of getting selected. And in length by sample, this is the equation x i is proportional to the x l y multiplied by y, where x i is the proportion of i length group in sample. So, this is the proportion of i length group in the sample. If we take the length by sample from the bulk, so, so i length group there are different length group 10 millimeter. 20 millimeter, 30 millimeter length group. So, I length group. So, this is the proportion of the I length group in the sample, and L y is the length of fiber with proportion y percent in bulk. Okay. So, this is the and ultimately this the proportion in the sample is totally different from the proportion in the bulk. So, one example is that L y is the what is L y is the length of fiber with proportion of y percent in bulk. So, this is the bulk proportion. So, let us say in bulk it is a mixture of fiber length of three groups. So, 10 millimeter, 20 millimeter and 30 millimeter okay. and there are various other groups are there other fiber. So, 15 millimeter, 25 millimeter. So, 10 millimeter it consists of 15 percent of the in the bulk, 20 millimeter the fiber is 15 percent in the bulk, 30 millimeter 15 percent in the bulk. So, in the bulk if we see it means so 10 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 30 millimeter are equally mixed in the bulk, but when we take the length bias sample. Suppose, here this is the um, tuft. From tuft we cannot do the numerical sampling. We have to do the length bias sampling. So, from tuft suppose in this tuft it is a mixture of say 10 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 30 millimeter say 15, 15, 15 percent uh, fibers are there or other five other lengths are equally say uh, at, at different proportion. Now, here if we see if we take the sample if we take the sample what will be the proportion of the length biased sample in the sample as per the length. So, for 
10 millimeter fiber for length what the proportion here was 15 percent, but in the bulk in the sample it will be 150 because it is a multiple of 10 multiplied by 15. So, it is 150. Similarly, 20 millimeter fiber its proportion is 300, 30 millimeter fiber its proportion is 450. So, if we take the actual proportion in the sample of this fiber, the short fiber that is a 10 millimeter fiber is to 20 millimeter is to 30 millimeter, it is a 1 is to 2 is to 3. What does it mean? In the bulk, the sample proportions were same 15 percent each, that means 1 is to 1 is to 1. But when we are sampling, we are taking the sample, its proportional proportion has changed depending on the length of the fiber. <coughs> it has its proportion has become 1 is to 2 is to 3. That means, 30 millimeter fiber has got 3 time probability to that of 10 millimeter fiber due to the length. So, that is the length bias sampling. Okay. So, it is a multiple of the fiber length and the proportion in the bulk. And if we remove say if we remove the length bias sample in the bulk the 15 mill 10 millimeter 20 millimeter and 30 millimeter was 1 is to 1 is to 1 equal but if we remove 1 is to 2 is to 3 fiber that means in the bulk the remaining portion here the total proportion will change because here in the bulk in the sample we have taken more longer fiber. So, longer fiber proportion will reduce here. So, removal of length bias sample will change the proportion of fiber in the remaining bulk as the longer fiber will be removed at higher proportion in the sample. Okay. So, this is this changes the characteristics of the bulk, but in numerical sample it does not change the characteristics. Like I am taking numerical sample from this sliver in this way. So, bulk characteristics remain same. Okay. And the length by sample, the chance of fiber crossing the line a and b is proportional to its length. So, this is the this lines within this zone the chances will be more for longer fiber. So, random tuft sampling. So, this is the length bias sampling and if by some way the fiber crossing in this area between a and b we can select. So, fiber crossing between A and B zone if we can select then it will be length bias sampling. Okay. So, the longer fiber will preferably be selected. Okay. So, if we see it is a numerical sampling in the numerical sampling it is a proportion is same okay, long fiber and short fiber and in length bias sampling if we see the length will be little bit high it is it will it will give us the idea of a longer fiber towards the higher length. And then so how will you prepare such sample? So, length by sample how to prepare this length by sample. So, numerical sample we have discussed like if we draw the fiber from the edge from a parallelly arranged fiber strand that will be numerical sample, but length by sample we have to we can prepare by fibro sampler which is used in 
fibrograph where this is the fiber tuft form and one clamp is there clamp will is moving through the fiber and it clamps it takes the fiber it take it picks the fiber and it picks the fiber from different point it's not the it's taking the fiber from the meat base end point now try to see in fibro sampler fibers are arranged in this fashion these are the fiber and what fibro sampler is doing this is the fiber it's a clamp it's moved through the fiber okay and the fibers are actually selected are caught at different point okay so this is in random one so this is suppose a clamp this fiber is gripped at this point another fiber will be gripped say at the end this way at different point it's gripping the fiber okay at random point and after that what will happen this will have folding this this end will not be remaining here this will remain this will this will fold so ultimately this will be like this now suppose all the fibers they have equal length i am trying to take say sample of say polyester just for trial okay now this fiber will this uh, clamp will grip the fiber at different point so this fiber is clamped at this point okay this fiber is clamped at this point this fiber is clamped at the end point this fiber is at the middle this fiber is at the this point say like this okay now after that the third one point is that so fiber 1 2 3 4 5 fiber 1 will get folded okay by the clamp in the clamp so due to its flexibility it will form a loop like this this portion becomes here comes here this is the portion and this portion remains here longer portion this fiber is selected at this point at almost at the edge so this will form smaller loop so this is the loop here this fiber is straight at at the end point this fiber will form this loop so this is the this portion and this one is this portion like this so finally if we see finally for i am talking about the fiber of same length finally if you see this is a clamp if we see the fibers this is a long fiber and our assumption is that fibers have chance to be select caught at any point okay and all the fibers they have equal chance and if you see the density of the fiber 
number of fibers and versus length. Suppose this is the number of fibers. and this is the length from the comb, this is the length. Okay. Here number of fiber will be maximum okay. and then it will keep on reducing and for this say, say cut polyester fiber, this curve will be this is the fibrogram of cut polyester fiber and for cotton the density the number of fibers or density of fiber uh, density of the cluster is because it is a in a photoelectric method it measures the light penetration. So, then depending on the density. So, cotton it shows this is the it escapes the, this is the nature that means the maximum length it is almost it will be a longest fiber, but this curve it is called fibrogram. Okay. This we will discuss when we will discuss the fiber length. Okay. So, <coughs> this is the length bias technique <coughs> and the assumption here is the there are two main assumptions. One is the fiber, a fiber is caught on the comb in the proportion to its length as compared to the total length of the fiber in the sample. That means, fibers with higher length will have equal higher proportion, but in our example we have taken for polyester as the fiber all the fibers have the same length they have equal all the fibers have equal chance, but in cotton longer fiber longer fiber will have greater chance that is the first assumption and second assumption is that the point where it is caught is at random along its length. Okay. This is the these are the assumptions based on this assumptions or we can if we know this assumption then we can actually take precaution to have to uh, know the actual fiber length. Okay. We will stop here today and we will continue with this in next class. Thank you.